There's an infectious disease in Wuhan. There's quite a lot of people in Wuhan getting this. There's some British people in Wuhan that are getting this. We were monitoring this, we were starting meetings around that. What if, so what, where do we go with this? Well, actually, I was in New Zealand on holiday. And whilst I was out there, it was very clear that uh, COVID was developing. We travelled through Singapore and you could see the anxiety starting to rise. It was absolutely clear that we'd got a huge wave coming. And about 10 days, two weeks into that, then of course the government put out the requirement that anybody who could work from home should do so. So we closed our three offices and the incident centre was set up here. It was an open office. We had a multidisciplinary team approach, trying to commission the best possible services for the population. So that was what we did. Mainly office based. Most of the team came in to work every day. And then COVID happened. And overnight, we were all working from home. And that's kind of where we stayed for the next two years. And also managing my children being off school and homeschooling them as well. So it was quite a, a big change. We were having such serious conversations at work and you'd, you'd leave a phone call and then have to break up a fight between the kids and it was, just, it was just so bizarre, so tough. But what helped was we were supported to work from home. So making sure that you know, the health and well-being of the staff was taken into consideration, I, I think the staff really appreciated that. I was asked to go in and take calls from other organisations it was chaotic, but in a good way, while well, people found their feet. And, and we got up to speed with that quite quickly. We were trying to sort out PPE, oxygen, trying to sort out lots of things quite quickly. That, that was not with a finance hat on, that was just in a can anybody help hat on. We were all a brand new team, so we, none of us knew each other. We'd never, we'd never met each other. The thing I remember most is just, I don't know, it just kind of, we, we saw into each other's lives instantly which we would never have done before you know that would have been those relationships would have been built up over time over lots of cups of tea and coffee and it just happened in the in a matter of days and the thing that we were working on straight away was bringing back staff so people who'd recently retired or left the service because we knew that workforce was going to be our biggest issue in in the pandemic being responsible for the well-being of six and a half million people can feel quite heavy and quite large. I mean, I think if we stand back and look at the scale of what, what this was, this was the first worldwide pandemic in a century. So there was virtually nobody alive who remembered it, and certainly nobody who remembered it with any knowledge. And technology was completely different from the last pandemic, so we were in uncharted territory. There was many things that occurred, many outbreaks that we needed to deal with, problems with nursing homes, care homes, getting lots of high numbers of, uh, of infections. So there was all sorts of things that emerged from that. And then we started planning for and thinking about a vaccine. To make sure that people actually get immunised was just really important. And being part of that, I think, was quite a, an achievement from a personal level as well as a professional level. It's all well and good working from home, like doing your day-to-day -day thing, but helping the nation as such. That's, yeah, that was really important to me. I think everyone stood up and helped because the pandemic was such an unknown and we were hearing that so many people were dying and or becoming very, very seriously ill with it that I think that everybody just realised that in order to make sure we're doing our bit and helping, we just all got on with it walking past a GP health centre. I stopped in the, in the pavement because there was a flotilla of elderly people homing in. They were all over 80. They were incredibly determined to get there. They were queuing beautifully. And then there was all these volunteers, most of whom were under 25. And that, that extent of effort and focus, and we were going to take this vaccine and make ourselves safer was just incredible. We've had amazing stuff that's come out as a result. We've had some really good ways of working, ways of doing things differently. But it's also been really traumatic and it's been really stressful. 
you know, we see numbers and data all, all the time of, you know, COVID cases coming through and all the backlog and all the stuff that's happened as a result of it. And you hold, you hold on to that and you go to bed thinking about that and you wake up worrying about it. It's a massive ask. It's not easy when you, when you have lost colleagues. When they are going through a pandemic, they are, the mind is focused and they are dealing with what is in front of them. I don't think there is time to think um, or reflect. It, it's just doing the job. But it has taken a toll on people. Things come and go, you know, technology changes constantly. But the one thing that stays constant and why people come to work in the NHS of the people. It was a paradigm shift. Previously, it was organisation first and system second or everything else. We, we, we were not thinking as one NHS. Whereas now, what COVID did was actually made it. We, we had to get to that place and we did. And now that we are here, I don't think anyone wants to go back to how it used to be. That's another thing that's come out of the pandemic that practices have had to change. We have had to do things a little bit differently, but all in all, they've had a positive impact on people's lives. If one of my children came in here now during this filming, I'd go, are you all right? Do you want to sit on my lap? Hi everyone, this is Tyler or Ava. Do you want to say hello? Two years ago, I'd have been Get out. This is, this is unprofessional. Me having a life that's not all about work is somehow unprofessional. And I'm grateful for where I work because that doesn't have to be the case. It's not, a, it's not an either or proposition. I think it's just underpinned that our people are the biggest asset that the NHS has. But what we need to make sure is our people are supported, respected for what they do. And um, they've achieved things they didn't think was possible and probably I didn't think was possible. And they've achieved it on their own with the support of their families and their communities and they've achieved it as part of a team. So for the people of the, of the east of England, the six and a half million people, I would want to say thank you, enormously thank you. Everybody stepped up, everybody worked beyond their hours and I think that period of time, as I say, working with the clinicians, working with the team, I am most humbled for working with them all. Um, yeah, they were amazing.